new information now in the Micah Miller case. And what we are now learning, this could really open up this thing even more than I believe that it already has. And, you know, I've been detailing and I've been covering this story since it first happened. All that we have now learned about JP, his practices, his past inappropriate behavior, not just with Micah, but also with his ex-wife Allison and other relationships that he had been in. You know, we talked a lot about the stalking of JP and how he did that with both Micah and also with his former wife, Allison. And that whole stalking thing is going to come back into play here with what we are going to talk about. I previously covered an incident that took place between JP and Micah back in November of 2022. And there was some sort of a fight that took place between the two. And well, Micah ended up going to her sister's house. She left JP. She went to her sister's house and I believe that was Sierra Francis that she went to to go stay with for a little bit. And there was a 911 call that was made by her sister because of, you know, JP was sending these texts and he was making all sorts of threats and everything that, you know, he was he was coming down there and that he was, you know, armed and ready is what he said. Uh, real nice of a pastor, by the way, right? Well, what we didn't really know is what caused that fight in the first place between JP and Micah. What was it that caused Micah to leave? Well, now we have that answer to that question, and I'm going to go over it here and, and, and much more because there was a phone call that JP had made. Uh, this would have been on that Sunday, April 28th, the day after Micah died. He made a phone call to someone that Micah knew very well. And well, the questions that he was asking are really now eye-opening, and this may again just really open up this thing even more. We will dive in and discuss here in just a second. Welcome everybody to Not By Sight News. Yes, a blind Christian guy here reporting to you. Reminding you, as always, that we walk by faith, not by sight. For someone like me, that's kind of my only option. Speaking of that, for those interested, you want to know my story. How did I go blind? How do I operate my entire ministry without being able to see? People always ask me questions, so I said, you know what? I'm going to make a video that explains it all. So you can find a link to that in the description section of all my videos. Just a way to kind of get to know me better and, you know, where I came from and where I am now. Uh, you know, we get, you know, great reaction on that video all the time from people who are checking it out. So yeah, you can check that out there. And also, if you really enjoy and appreciate the work I do here, think about donating to help me out. You could do it a few different ways. One, you can just hit that super thanks button on the YT video here or join the Patreon for as little as five bucks a month, patreon.com slash notbysightnews, link in the description. Hey, you wanna get access to all of these videos before they hit the main YT platform? Well, when you sign up to Patreon, that's exactly what you're going to get along with a bunch of other cool features that Patreon has to offer. I hope you'll check me out over there. Again, patreon.com slash notbysightnews. Big thank you to everybody already contributing and those thinking of doing so. Thank you as well. Your generosity is greatly appreciated. Now, if you've missed any of the past reports that I've done on this case, I encourage you to go back on the channel and check those out. Recently, I spoke about two individuals that were associated with Solid Rock, one being a former videographer, for Solid Rock that actually filmed Micah's memorial service. He is now speaking out. He had some interesting information about how all that you know came to be. You can go back on the channel and check out that video. And also a former associate pastor of Solid Rock that worked very closely with John Paul Miller also gave an interview uh, recently and talked about his decision to leave the church and what he saw during his time there. If you want to check out that video, it is up on the channel as well. Well, okay, now let's go back here again to November of 2022, because this was again the fight that happened between both John Paul and Micah, which caused Micah to leave. And, you know, again, the 911 call made by her sister, I covered this before, but now we have more context. This is very important. If you remember, JP was sending text messages to, you know, Micah's sister and, and, and her saying that, you know, he was... He was coming to get her, that he had, he had six guns with him, he was armed and ready, and that he was coming on down to her house. 
And again, what pastor says that, right? What pastor says that? And by the way, why are you coming down with, you know, all of these guns to get your wife back? What, you, six of them for, 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 you know, these two women here? I mean, yeah, that's just a, a, a real coward move to even say something like that. Uh, also, we know that, you know, JP was gathering up Micah's belongings and he was going to, you know, he was filling them up in these black trash bags and he was going to dump them on her sister's lawn. And you had Micah's sister made the call to 911, you know, informing them about what was going on here. Uh, eventually, you know, JP had later, you know, apologized and he said in text messages to Micah's sister, well, you know, if you just tell her if she just comes home, I just want her to come home. Things will be different this time because <laughs> that's exactly what these people say all the time uh, when they are in relationships where this sort of mistreatment is going on. And it's and it's actually how they keep them uh, in relationships like this. Some for decades it takes for these women to get out uh, and away from these narcissists like JP. So what was it you know, in this fight that led to Micah leaving in the first place? Micah has a best friend by the name of Charlotte. And one night there in November, again, JP and Micah were having a conversation. And this is such a, the question that he asks her is just insane to me. Because he asks Micah, if you could, if you could kiss any girl out there in the world, who would it be? Now again, if you stop for a second and you, and you ask yourself, why is a pastor asking his wife this question? Okay, they're married, right? They're, I mean, and, and again, why would this even come up? Well, apparently JP was very jealous of the friendship that Micah had with Charlotte. Now, jealousy is a key thing here because that's something that was obvious with JP when it came to just not just Charlotte, but also Micah's family even other people at the church that Mike could, you know, talk with. Remember, there was that one Sunday where, you know, JP was preaching and, you know, he was going over the fact that he got a hold of Micah's phone and he was looking through her text messages and he was saying that, wow, she's even messaging some of you here in the church. Some of you are men. Why is it that she's talking to you and not me? So again, jealousy, something that JP has a, a huge ish, issue with because again, narcissist, you know, a control freak, all of that. He wanted to keep Micah all to himself. I mean, this man did everything he could to rip Micah away from her family, her friends, right? He wanted to isolate her. This is exactly how a cult leader operates. I've talked about this before with other big churches, right? You know, when you try to leave them, they do everything in their power to make your life as miserable as possible. Isolation is a very key component to how a cult leader operates. And that's exactly what JP did. So getting back to the question here, you know, Micah didn't want to answer the question at first because again, it's weird, but he continued to press her on it. And so finally, Micah said, Charlotte, right? JP got very angry when she mentioned Charlotte because again, he didn't like her because they were best friends. And he asked her, why Charlotte? Micah replied back by saying, well, because if, if I did it, she wouldn't tell anybody about it. So this is what sparked the huge fight between the two of them. And Micah, you know, got her things and, and, and she got out of there. And she told JP at the time that all she wanted to do was just go and see her sister. So she goes to her sister's house. Now, I mentioned here the text messages that JP had sent to Micah's sister, you know, in Micah. But what we did not know, and now we do, is that he also included Charlotte on that text message. He made it a group text, included her on it. Because again, they had just got done talking about this and he was asking her the question, who would you want to, you know, what female would you want to kiss? So he's including Charlotte on this to somehow include her. Like, see, this is, she said that she would want to kiss you. I don't like you. And just, just again, all this weird stuff. So he throws her on the message again, just for this reason. And, you know, again, he's, threatening to go over there with his guns. He's armed and ready and all of this, just showing, you know, the traits that this is the one. This was the guy that had the mental issues. 
it wasn't Micah. Remember, there was also that video of him where he was whimpering and crying. It was in the front yard of his ex-wife Allison's house where he was talking about being covered in ants and he just wanted to see Jesus and, you know, I, I want to see my kids and everything else. I mean, again, just very weird. Again, he talks about how Micah was on lithium. I, I think it was JP uh, that was on that stuff. So Charlotte's going to come back into the into the picture here because getting now to the service where JP announces Micah's death. And before I even do that, let me say this too. This is also an important part of the story. You know, Charlotte had previously lived in Myrtle Beach, but then she moved to Virginia not long ago. Okay, so Virginia, north of Myrtle Beach. And that's going to be a key thing to remember as we continue here. Now, that Sunday on April 28th, remember, JP preaches the message, right? He's joking. He's, he's making all sorts of jokes. And then he announces that, you know, Micah, you know, she died, got a call late last night. Still want to know where that call came from, by the way, who, who that was. Because again, if you're talking late at night, you know, when her body was discovered sometime around four o'clock after four o'clock in the afternoon, why did it take that long for him to be contacted? You know, so many, again, so many questions with that still. And I hope that we can get those answers soon. You know, he tells people it was self-induced. Please don't talk about this as, you know, you're leaving today. Again, controlling the narrative. Just keep me and my family in your prayers. Oh, and by the way, don't forget to continue giving to the church. Like, because you had to sneak that in there, right? I mean, look, they got that 400000 dollar plane they got to take care of. And, uh, uh, you know, they got to keep that money coming in. You know, the church, by the way, you know, has ATMs inside of it. So, uh, you know, you can always, uh, it, it's just a nice way for them to give you easier access to give to the church along with their, uh, you know, their their boxes and their baskets that they have just placed all over the church there. So they conclude the service. Remember, JP says next Sunday, the following Sunday, May 5th, we're going to have a funeral for her. And he puts this funeral together like so quick, right? I mean, what's the rush? How could it, how could you plan it that quick? You just got the call literally the night before, but you're already planning a memorial service the following Sunday. And then we know that he was pushing hard for the body to be cremated, obviously, because, well, he didn't want an autopsy done. And never and no, one never was done, by the way. You just had that one report from the medical examiner. And from what I saw in North Carolina, uh, it's up to the medical examiner to, you know, decide whether or not they're going to, you know, do an autopsy. The medical examiner opted not to. Why? I have no clue, especially in a case like this where there's so many questions. Why would you not? You know, they didn't check for water in the lungs. They didn't check for, you know, gun residue anywhere. Uh, and again, JP, you know, forced Micah's family to, you know, sign this, these cremation papers in order, you know, for them to be able to see her at the funeral home one more time. And then we know that uh, Micah's father, uh, Michael Francis. Uh, hey, big shout out to, to Michael, by the way. Michael has been watching these videos, these updates that I've done. Uh, he's in the comment section as well in some of these videos. So, hey, Michael, if you're watching, man, I hope you're doing good. Uh, continuing to pray for you and your family for God to just bring you guys favor in this case. Justice is coming, my friend. It, 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 God's going to deal with this. I can I can promise you that. Uh, so remember, Michael took pictures of, of Micah and she had bruises all over her hands and her arms, right? I mean, it was... Again, obviously showing a struggle here. Um, even in the the uncensored 911 call that Micah allegedly made, you could hear screaming. Why would you hear screaming from somebody that was about to take their own life, right? Just very strange. So service concludes. JP leaves the church, makes a phone call. The phone call he makes to all people is Charlotte, Micah's best friend. And this is why JP called her. And by the way, I'm going to have a link here in the description of this video where you can actually watch. There was an interview that Charlotte gave uh, where she goes into more detail about this. So I, I want you to check that out when you're done watching, watching this here, if you'd like to do that. So JP gives Charlotte a call and, you know, he asks her, you know, did you hear about Micah? And she said that she did. And, you know, JP said that, well, she had some more, JP had some more details that he could share with Charlotte. And she says, okay. 
and he talks about how you know well, well Micah you know she she took her own life and you know again Charlotte is very distraught best friend of Micah and all of that and then JP asked her did you hear from her did you hear from her you know the day that she died that would have been on Saturday April 27th and Charlotte said no I, I didn't and then JP and this was this is the big takeaway here and then JP asks her really I thought she was coming to see you. Why would JP think that? Right? Why would JP... And again, I want to point out, when, when she, when, when Michael left, remember she was supposed to go to work that day and all that, she headed north towards, we you know, Lumber River. But was she planning on going somewhere else? And maybe she couldn't tell Charlotte, obviously, because Micah knew that she had been followed and tracked by JP before. It was admitted. They found the tracking devices on the vehicles. Tires slashed, right? So again, let me go back to it. JP says to Charlotte, I thought she was coming to see you. Now, Charlotte again, doubled down. I, I had no idea she was coming to see me. She didn't tell me. She didn't contact me. But again, why would she? If she's being traced and tracked, why would she alert Charlotte before she was on her way? Now, Charlotte was asked the question, do you think that Micah was being tracked the day that she died? And Charlotte responded by saying, I mean, I can't rule it out. Sure. Why not? He did it before. Why wouldn't he be doing it again? Remember, JP was just served with divorce papers two days before Micah passed away, right? On April 25th. He reportedly received those papers a little after 5 p.m. that day, okay? Now, along with that, it wasn't just the divorce papers. Along with that was also, you know, that, you know, no contact order, that restraining order. Because again, this guy kept following her around everywhere, sending goons after her and whatnot. So was that the final straw? for JP. Seeing how he would react when Micah would leave before, again, going back to that incident in November of 2022, when, you know, you know, Micah left there when JP asked her, who would you kiss? What female would you kiss? And she said, Charlotte, he got all mad, right? Blew up at her. Go, going back to all of that, we see the patterns here, uh, how he acted. Remember, remember he tried to run over to that other girl's like back in 1998, try to, you know, hit some, that other girl with his car. This guy has a history of this sort of erratic, sort of violent behavior. And the fact that he says to Charlotte, I thought she was coming to see you. Again, he would only know that if he had tracking devices on the vehicle and he looked like it was, it looked like she was heading off in that direction. Again, North, remember she moved to Virginia. That's a key component in this. Charlotte was also asked the question if she would ever be willing to testify in court on behalf of Micah. And she said, absolutely, yes. So, again, this is huge new information that we are now receiving. Good on Charlotte for speaking out about this. It continues to paint JP in a very dark, you know, really in this, this, this dark frame that we know, and there's darkness there. I've talked about it all the time. Where does it go from here? With all that has now come out, isn't it interesting? Supposedly the FBI is investigating this. I mean, maybe they are, maybe they're not. Why have we not yet gotten any updates from either Robeson County or the FBI in regards to this case? Things have been very quiet on that front. You know, right, Robeson County came out. They ruled that, you know, Micah's dead. She took her own life. And then a few days later, then they alluded to the fact that, well, the FBI and the attorney's office are now, you know, we, we've, we've contacted them for help in this. But after that, we haven't heard anything. How much longer before we get the justice here for Micah that, you know, is desperately needed as this all continues to unfold? Look, God knows the answers. He's going to bring, ultimately, justice is going to come. And, and I want you all to know that 
It, it may look bleak right now, but at the end of the day, all these individuals go before the Lord and they have to give an account. And huh, if they do not repent, if they do not turn from their wicked ways before that, I mean, that's it. It's game over for them. You're talking eternal separation from God, which is, man, you don't want to hear those words, depart from me, I never knew you. It's the worst words that you could ever hear from the Lord. He is long-suffering, but he's not going to be like that forever. Again, there will be more information for you here in the description, and I welcome your thoughts as always. Don't forget, if you really enjoy and appreciate my work here and you would like to contribute with a donation, remember you can hit that super thanks button or join the Patreon for as little as five bucks a month, patreon.com slash not by site news. It's all appreciated. What I want to do right now, something I do on all these videos, let's end this video on hope. It's part of my ministry outreach. This is an altar call. I've been doing this here on these videos since 2016. No matter what it is that I'm discussing here in the church and you know, really exposing these wolves. We always want to give people the opportunity to receive Christ as Savior. So for anybody watching now, if you are somebody who has not yet received Jesus as Lord and Savior and you would like to do so, I want to lead you in a prayer to do that right now. This is a prayer you could do in your own words, but I will give you the steps you need to bring it before the Lord today. First thing you want to do right off the top, acknowledge you are a sinner. That is something that we all are. The good news is that God gave his only son, Jesus Christ to die on that cross for the sins of all the world as he died and rose again for you and me. He paid the cost. What you have to do is repent of your sin. That means to turn from sin, not just to say you're sorry and then jump back to your old ways, but to actually turn from sin, which are those lifestyles, patterns, habits, behaviors, things in your life that go against the word of God. If you humbly go before the Lord, though, and ask him to forgive you, he'll wipe your sin away, and the Bible says he doesn't remember it any longer. And then... You invite Jesus into your life to be your Lord and Savior. When you do that, you become born again, a child of God. You will have eternal life. Trust me when I tell you there is no greater decision that you will ever make than the one you do to give your life to Christ. And I pray you make that decision today. Again, more info down below. I welcome your thoughts. Thank you all again so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I'll be back with more. You guys take care. Please be safe out there. God bless each and every single one of you. And I'll talk with you soon.